What's up, everyone? My name is Edson Cardona, and I want to welcome you guys to the Hashtag Let's Kick the Series. On these episodes, we get the pleasure to be joined by professional athletes, get a little insight on their background and how they made it this far in their athletic careers. A conversation between athletes about their journeys, leading them to success. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everyone? Hope you are keeping safe with the COVID-19 pandemic. And my hope is that we're all doing our part and standing in solidarity with the racial justice movement and against police brutality because Black Lives Matter. My name is Edson Cardona, and I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. I want to introduce on this week's episode, Xavier Scruggs. Travis Wood up on the Cubs 10. Center field, it drops in front of Fowler. Heading home is Molina. Cardinals lead two to one. Scruggs to left, it's deep. Major League homer, Xavier Scruggs, a two-run shot. The eyes in 771 minor league games. And a line drive into deep right field. And that's the first Major League hit for Scruggs. And he'll also pick up his first ever Major League RBI. Congratulations, Xavier Scruggs. baseball player, born in Los Angeles, raised in San Diego, played for Poway High School, played at the University of Las Vegas, played for the MLB teams, the Cardinals, the Marlins, ended up going to Korea in the KBO League, played for NC Dinos, and then played for the Leones de Yucatan in Mexico. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Xavier. How you doing, boss? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you having me on here. I feel real special right now. <laughs> no, man, I appreciate you. I want to thank you again for being part of this episode of the Hashtag Let's Kick It Series. I mean, we'll get started. Let's do it, man. I'm all about it. All right, so everyone has, you know, their story on becoming an athlete in whatever sport that they, you know, ended up playing, you know, now professionally. So when did your journey as an athlete begin? Yeah, my journey as an athlete began probably when I was about five or six years old. My dad, I remember he handed me a bat and said, hey, you're going to be playing on this little league team here. And I said, baseball, playing baseball. I don't know about baseball. I like basketball and football. But I remember, you know, joining the T-ball team, uh, couldn't hit worth a lick, couldn't hit the ball off the tee. I was trash. Um, so that's kind of where things started. But at the same time, I noticed – over the years that I was able to start to develop some skills, some good hand-eye skills, hand-eye coordination, um, basketball, baseball, and football were my top three all the way till high school. And then um, just kind of stuck with just baseball at that point because I knew I had a good opportunity to take it to college education, college scholarship. And also I got drafted my senior year of high school to the Seattle Mariners. So I knew there was opportunity there. And um, through those years, through those youth years, I really tried to focus in on um, really being smart about my skills and really taking advantage of practicing them, getting them better. Um, and work ethic was always something that was huge for me, no matter the age. It was from six, seven years old all the way till now. So that's kind of um, how I started playing baseball. It's crazy to see, right, that you had, you know, a little bit of passion for other sports, like you said, like basketball and football. And so going into that transition to high school, I mean, playing baseball, you knew now that you had, you know, the skills and what it t took to get to a D1, you know, university or playing with the scholarship. So what was it for you that ended up being, you know, that, all right, now I'm going to take baseball more serious so that once I can, you know, get that D1 scholarship or whatever it was to play at a D1, you know, what was it for you that was kind of that, okay, X factor that I can be 
you know, that D1 baseball player instead of the other sports? Yeah, I think for me, it was the basketball players were getting too tall for me. Football players were getting way too strong, man. I had to just lock in on something that I knew I was, you know, really good at and really passionate about. Uh, you know, and I had kept hearing people tell me, okay, there's opportunity for you to get drafted, opportunity for you to go get a college scholarship. Teams kept, uh, college schools kept coming, seeing me play. So I knew that this was the route that was going to be best for me. And, and it was always ingrained in me at an early age that college education was really important. Both of my parents graduated from a four-year university. I understood the benefits that came from it. And so for me, it was always something I was always really excited about. Um, so once I started getting some looks from the colleges, I really try to take advantage with uh, take advantage of it and say, okay, I have some opportunities to go here. Let me figure out what my best fit is. And you know, baseball that was the motivation that I needed in high school. It was like, okay, I'm starting to get some recognition, starting to understand that teams like me, some schools like me. Um, why don't I keep working hard at this and keep keep pushing at this and, and take this as far as it can go? A lot of athletes don't really see, you know how important it is to get that college education. I mean, if you're a good whatever athlete in baseball, football, soccer, you know, basketball, a lot of players decide like, okay, if I can't have that opportunity to go play pro at a high school, then I'll go. But at the end of the day, a lot of athletes don't see like, they have to have a plan B at the end of the day. God forbid anyone gets injured or whatever happens, you don't get the opportunity anymore. Having that college education is so important and no one can take that away from you you know getting that piece of paper at the end of the day that says hey so and so graduated from this university or you know it's it's so important and a lot of athletes need to see that nowadays that you know focus on also getting your college education because it goes hand in hand with the sport absolutely and obviously college isn't for everybody but at the same time if you have something that you know you want to focus on or you have something that you know you want to really excel at and you have that avenue through sport why not take advantage of that you know if somebody's going to pay for it why not take advantage of that even if it's going to be a partial scholarship or you walk on and have an opportunity to earn a scholarship I think that there's huge benefits in that. And that's going to be a separator from, from you and somebody else later on down the road in sport or out of sport, you know? So just like you said, having that piece of paper, having that recognition, having that opportunity to just live a college atmosphere, college lifestyle too, that gives you such uh, amazing learning um, experience. I think that that's important as well. So uh, all those things that you mentioned are, are huge um, on your road to success for life. Yeah, it definitely gives you, you know, a different side of, of, you know, your youth and living, you know, on your own and figuring out what do you want to become growing up. And so transitioning into the college, you know, going to UNLV, getting your scholarship, if you can tell me a little bit about, you know, getting that paper, signing it and going, getting, you know, your senior year, not having to worry about it. A lot of players, you know, go into their senior year, don't know what's going to happen having gotten that scholarship, having gotten, you know, looks from many colleges. So it's everyone's dream to get that scholarship and go to a university and not worry about it. So how was it for you, if you can tell me that, you know, whole experience of getting looked at by colleges? Yeah, it was amazing. It was, it was a blessing, um, you know, being a junior and, and committing to a school and, and knowing that you already had a school throughout your senior year, you, you, it takes a weight off your shoulders. And for me and for a lot of guys with baseball, it's like, okay, you have the opportunity to get drafted out of high school. So now I can start focus on, okay, is there a professional opportunity here? So then I start kicking it into another gear, really starting to focus on, okay, let me see if I can get some looks at some professional teams as well. So then you start to really, it really shows you as an athlete what you are capable of doing and where you can maybe see yourself down the road years from now, you know? So it starts to put those wheels in motion that it's okay. It's not really so much just for fun anymore. You're like, I can make a living out of this thing. Like, this is serious. So um, knowing I got that college scholarship, that opportunity, it, it just made me work harder, motivated me more, um, you know, and then just being drafted my senior year by the Mariners, I knew that, okay, if I just go and give myself three good years in college, I can be a professional at this. I can get drafted again and really take it to the next level. So um, even though 
I got drafted, college baseball was always on my mind, going and living that college experience and lifestyle. It was something that I was always excited about. Yeah, I mean, you talk about getting drafted your senior year and how, I mean, amazing that is at the time, but you focusing on, you know, that college education was kind of like what athletes don't see at the end of the day. They only see what's in front of them and don't see the long run, you know, and it's amazing to see your story and how, you know, you you gave up, you know, that opportunity to go play pro, but you knew if you can, you know, keep going, sticking with your discipline, that motivation to go those three years and ball out so that later on you can get the same opportunity, then it was going to happen for you. And so the transition for you to go into college, I mean, being a rookie, you know, playing against seniors, juniors, guys who've been already in the collegiate level, how was that experience for you coming in as a freshman? Yeah, the transition definitely wasn't easy. Um, but like I mentioned before, I knew I had a goal in mind and I knew that uh, the type of caliber player I was and I was able to play at the professional level, I knew that I had to just focus on getting better every day. Um, I couldn't worry too much about who was around me, you know, whether it be senior, junior, who I'm competing with. I tried to just really focus on getting better every day. Um, so for me, and this is what I tell athletes all the time, it's like, you, you almost have this, this bubble around you. And if you're able to stay within that bubble and not worry and get so distracted about other things and other things that could affect you and other things that are out of your control, then you're gonna be much better off. You have to control what you can control. And uh, so it was definitely a transition to answer your question, but at the same time, I knew what I was there for. I knew that even if I took care of business as a freshman, um, before going into the season, I would be a freshman starter, which I was. And that, that those were the goals for me. So when I really sat down and looked at the goals that I had, I figured out, okay, how am I going to attack these? And how is this going to help me project to what I want to be after college? So I try to stay focused on that and, and really lock in on those things. Yeah, being able to have goals in mind and set those that as a freshman, you know, being a freshman starter, like those are all things that everyone wants and can gain if they put in the effort. And so were there any obstacles that you faced throughout college um, and how did you overcome them? Yeah, I think one of the biggest obstacles for me uh, was just making sure that my body was in the in the right condition. I had uh, before going to college, I hadn't really lifted weights too much, hadn't done too much conditioning like on my own. So I started to learn a lot of those things when I got to college, and I really tried to take advantage of that because going into college, I was more of a chubbier kid. Uh, I was eating a lot, eat, just eating whatever. Didn't know much about nutrition, but once I got to college, I started learning some of those things, and I saw how they had effect on my body, how they had effect on my energy. Energy. And just being able to learn about those things was huge for me. So I tried to take advantage of that as well. Uh, another thing that I had to get past was just those normal Vegas distractions, right? So I was a, a young 18, 19, 20 year old. I was never 21 in college. Uh, so I had those little temptations to be going out to the club all the time, partying all the time, you know, underage drinking, going to the bars, whatever it may be. So I had to reel myself back in a few times and realize, okay, if this is my goal, you know, if I call myself a leader, first and foremost, I, I need to be a leader for my team, need to be a leader for my university. Um, and then second of all, if I, call my, if, if I call myself having a goal later on in life to be professional, I, I got to make sure nothing gets in the way of that. So, you know, you always have fun during your college experience, but at the same time, you have to, like you said, remember your goals and go after those goals. And, and when you set goals, be consistent about them. So that was what I had to make sure that I, I did. There's a lot of, you know, things that come into play when you go into college. And like you said, you're in the heart of it all. Las Vegas, you know, a lot of temptation that goes in that, at, in that city. But you knew what you wanted. You know, you knew your end goal was to get drafted. Your end goal was to play in the MLB. And so now for fast forwarding a little bit into that, you know, draft day, uh, being with your family, you know, getting that phone call. I know it works a little bit different for the MLB draft and all any sports as well, but how was that experience for you? Because that's a dream come true, right? You had it already senior year in high school, but now you work even harder to build yourself into the player that you wanted to be. 
um, and you learn so much throughout college. And so if you can give me a little bit of the details on that experience of being drafted in, in the MLB. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. Um, I just remember I had worked so hard, like you said, to get to that point and have that day come. Me and my family, I, I remember my aunt, she had made draft shirts. She was getting us dressed up in the draft shirts, and I was all excited about it. Uh, I didn't know when I was going to be drafted, but I just knew I was going to be drafted at that time. Uh, with baseball, is you're just checking the computer at the time. It wasn't on TV or nothing like that. And there's 50 rounds at the at that time. There was 50 rounds for baseball, so it, it was a, a long process. I, I even went to the gym during the day because I was a little frustrated. I was like, "Man, I haven't gotten drafted yet. What's going on here?" I see some of the other names on the ticker. I'm like, "You know, I'm better than that dude." So I went to the gym trying to pump out some frustration, hit the uh, hit the uh, chest press, hit the elliptical, uh, you know, and I, I remember getting a phone call from the Cardinals general manager and he just mentioned, hey, we, we just drafted you. I didn't even know it yet, but he said, we just drafted you and, and I was juiced. It was like, you know, everything I worked hard for, everything that I've really tried to put into motion early on in my life. Uh, I, I kept thinking about all the people that helped me get to that point, all the mentors, the family members, all the practices that my parents took me to, you know, drive me up and down these freeways, flying me. So all that stuff just came into my mind and uh, really was emotional about it. And I was just excited to, to get on my, on my way for my professional career. Yeah, that, that's definitely a moment like, you know, you definitely won't forget and you'll, you'll have it on your mind, you know, day in and day out. Like it was just yesterday as a young kid, just getting drafted, getting that phone call is, is the biggest part of, you know, your career and it's that start for you. And so transitioning now into the MLB, I mean, you're playing against grown men guys who've been in the league, you know, if you can tell me a little bit about your transition now going into the Cardinal locker room. Um, I know there's a lot of stages to go to, until you go play to the highest, you know, the MLB. But if you can tell me a little bit about your transition and transition until you made it to the big leagues. Yeah, definitely, man. I was in the minor leagues for seven years before I even got to the big leagues. So that was um, a long period, um, a long time coming for me. I knew that eventually if I just kept at it, I was going to get to where I needed to be. So it was it was an experience in itself, just knowing, OK, I'm called up to where I where I've been dreaming about going for so long. I've been grinding these minor leagues for seven years, eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, sleeping on these old buses, um, 14 hour bus trips. And now I'm finally like staying at the Ritz Carlton, you know, order room service, eating whatever I eating whatever I want you know, flying and, and having the, the stewardess bring me whatever drink I need, no, no paying for it. So, you know, it's finally like a point where I was like, okay, now I see why I got the opportunity to have to go through this grind because it makes it that much sweeter once you get there. So once I stepped into that Cardinal locker room, it was like, okay, it's go time now. This is where I know I belong. This is something I've been grinding for for a long period of time. I'm familiar with all these players because a lot of them I came up with. So I was, I was comfortable. Um, not too comfortable to where, like, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I, I felt that there was still anxiousness within me, but at the same time, I knew it was like, okay, this is somewhere I belong. And, uh, you know, playing with the Cardinals for 2014, 2015, amazing experience, it's such a historic organization. Fans flood the, the stadium every game, every night, all red. Um, so just such a huge organization in itself. And it was an opportunity for me to just get better. That's, that's how I kept looking at it. I was like, okay, now I'm in the major leagues, but let me find a way to just keep getting better every day um, and leave a, a statement on this field every night. Yeah, having that experience and you talking about it, I mean, it gives me goosebumps, you know, like being able to see you become so mature throughout those seven years and keep grinding, like you say, is amazing because you persevered through everything. I mean, you went through it all. And like you said, at the end of the day, I know where I want to be and I'm going to get there. And you made it. Right. And you really see the difference of players and how sometimes, you know, that mental strength kills players. I mean, players who've been 
in the minor leagues for seven years, not everyone goes through. Some, you know, quit after three years, after one year. They don't see, you know, that, that light at the end of the tunnel where they're like, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. And for you to go through all seven years, you know, grinding out, putting all that motivation in, in day in and day out, you realize, and like you said, now I can order whatever I want. I got room service. I mean, those are just little perks, but at the end of the day, getting that start and getting that play, you know, it makes you a better player. And a lot of athletes don't understand, or even people, you know, don't understand behind the scenes of what it takes to be a professional athlete. They don't see that hard work. They think it's like easy for someone to come in and get that contract and you're playing. At the end of the day, not, not everyone gets that opportunity. You got to work for that. And like you said, the most important thing you said is once you were there, that motivation kept going. Like you said, you wasn't comfortable. You weren't that comfortable where, yeah, I was there, but there's the guys to my right and to my left that I want to take my spot you know and and like you said that's just all that success now is just amazing to see um and so after seeing your success with the cardinals going to you know the marlins going and playing in korea uh playing in yucatan mexico i mean all the success now if you can who do you credit your success to yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to name one person. Uh, it's, it's tough because I've had so many mentors in my life from um, a David Justice who played with the Braves, a, a Tony Gwynn, um, uh, my own father, my, my mother. Um, you know, I've had many college coaches that have came through that came through UNLV multiple years that, that helped push me. Um, even the guy that recruited me, I still talk to him today. Um, and then there's been multiple Cardinal hitting coaches like these people all help push me to be a different level of, you know, of an athlete. Um, and it had almost nothing to do with on the field stuff. It was all like mental. So for me, everything that they talked about, everything that they helped me persevere through, everything that they helped me understand, okay, I need self-discipline for this. I need to be motivated for this, even though I don't want to do this at this time. I still need to do it because this is what the best of the best do. Um, so everything that they did was almost more of a, a like a mental approach toward everything that I want to get better at, everything that I want to do. And, you know, once your mental is right, once you got the right, um, you know, thoughts in your head, um, then you can just be free, man. You can go let your abilities take take precedence over everything. You can go and let your talents just go wild man and that's what I get excited about is like okay let me make sure I get this mental right and now I can just go to work so for me there's been so many people down the line and uh, definitely have to give a lot of credit to my father who's, who started that you know he's a big baseball guy and, and loved the game and, and kind of taught me the game growing up so f for me to be able to learn that stuff from him and and take it level by level, you know, grade by grade, age by age, and all the way to the professional ranks in Major League Baseball and all these other countries has been a blessing. So it's been a lot of people that have had, had played part in that. Being, yeah, being able to have that support from everybody definitely helps, you know, being able to have those people who believe in you. And like you said, your father, who was a big influence and in you playing and him, you know, at the end of the day, seeing you at the top level, you know, is, is amazing for him because he gets to see like, man, my son worked so hard and now he made it to the MLB. Now I can rep his jersey, have his name on my back. I mean, that's every athlete's, athlete's dream come true. Um, but like you said, the mental, you know, is very important in an athlete's career because it can either make or break, you know, their career. And like you said, if they aren't happy at one point or, you know, the coaches don't like them or players, this and that, I mean, they won't perform at their highest, you know, and it's very hard for an athlete to really be able to focus on that mental capacity where they can be strong willed and not be broken at any moment. Um, and like you said, that was a very important thing in your life where you had those people that were off the field that really helped you. Hey, mentally, you got to do this so that when you do get on the field, then it's a piece of cake for you. Um, and so what advice would you give to your younger self if you could? I mean, there's a lot of the younger generation that, you know, don't have 
uh, that mentor or don't have, you know, a lot of support. So if you could give yourself advice, you know, when you're that 15, 10, you know, 20, um, what advice would it be? Yeah, I think the biggest piece of advice would just to be keep asking questions. Um, you know, whatever I want to do, if I want to get to a certain place, like ask questions, how do I get there? What are the things that I need to do to accomplish that? What are some goals I need to set? Um, what does my routine look like? What, what should my focus look like? So just asking questions. I think a lot of times in, the, in our youth, we're afraid to ask. Um, and, you know, I don't know if that's a man thing, an ego thing, whatever it may be, but I, I feel like that's one way that we can always grow is just asking questions, learning about something that we don't know about. Um, you know, even if we don't have the mentor or a father figure or a parent, whatever it may be, you know, figuring out who knows what I want to know. And let me ask them, even if that's Googling something or looking on YouTube, like we have the resources nowadays with social media and everything to where we can go and look at our favorite athlete and see what he does as far as routine wise some of the things that he does on and off the field on and off the court ice whatever it may be we can see what he does what she does you know what they eat like those are the things I feel like this young generation can learn so much from is everything is documented nowadays and people have easy access to it so go figure those things out um, so that I, I think today's technology is a huge thing and, and that's what we have to use now. So for me, that, ask questions and, and use the resources that you have, man. There's, there's so many abundant um, opportunities and avenues to take your athletic career that you don't have any excuses nowadays. Yeah, having, you know, the whole just internet it's like you can have so much information for somebody to just look up and like you said check your favorite player out you'll be able to see that or like you having questions i mean a lot of times i know at a younger age i myself was oh should i ask him this you know or should i ask the coach this and at the end of the day if it's gonna help you like so be it that's something that you need to put forth so you can become a better player um, and so a little bit on the fun side, you know, your favorite baseball moment or moments, if you can tell me, you know, I don't know, in Korea, in Mexico, you know, you play in different leagues. So what was your best baseball moments? Yeah, my favorite baseball moment has to be my first major league home run uh, with the Miami Marlins. I just remember, you know, you got a legend, uh, Ichiro Suzuki was on second base. Um, hit the ball to left field, uh, hit the crack of the bat, and I just knew it was gone. I was like, oh, this is my first homer. Just jogging around the bases, like on cloud nine, um, you know, coming around, coming around third base. I got my man uh, all time. He's the all time pinch hit leader, coaching third base. Lenny Harris daps me up. I'm coming home. I dap up Ichiro. And then I come into the come into the dugout. I got Don Mattingly right there, big time legend. Obviously, Barry Bonds was my hitting coach at the time. So I'm like, man, this is just surreal. Like, I can't even believe this moment right now. So I was on cloud nine, man. I didn't even didn't even feel my body for like the next 24 hours. So it was an amazing experience. I'll never forget it. I got the home run ball. Uh, so it, it was uh, something I'll never forget. That's amazing. You talk about all these legends, right? And you see it and it's something you dream for. I mean, the definitely the experiences that we all live for as athletes. And and it's just amazing to see that, you know. Um, if you can talk a little bit about that whole being in Korea, being in KBO League, I mean, how was that transition for you? Being, you know, in the MLB, playing in the States, and now getting the opportunity to play abroad, you know, how was that whole transition for you to now – being a total different bubble, you know, not being in the States, not being close to home. I know you've been, I mean, it's a lot different out there. So how was that for you to just really figure yourself out on being in that league? Yeah, no, it was tough, man. It was tough because I think the toughest thing is, you know, not being able to know the language and not being able to know even like their alphabet um, because it's characters, man. Like when I went to Latin countries, I could have still at least put words together because they got the same alphabet, but there it's, it's totally different. So 
um, kind of learning those things was the toughest thing and not having um, only but one or two guys to really converse with in English was something that was really tough. Uh, luckily, I had a great translator over there. Um, me and him became close friends. Actually, I had two of them. We were really close friends even till today. Um, so that was the toughest thing, that language barrier. Um, but I really learned that, you know, as long as you give effort to try to figure out what somebody's saying or try to like relationally learn about somebody else that, you know, the language barrier can only be so high, you know, you can knock that down in multiple different ways. So I figured, um, you know, my time there, I had two years there. I really learned about all of my teammates. Uh, I learned a lot about the Korean culture. Um, and it was an experience I'll never forget. I even had my first son over there. Uh, me and my wife had our first son over there. So it was something that we'll just never forget. And, and we loved our time there. As an athlete, I mean, we get the, the pleasure to play in different places and really be able to learn about different cultures. You know, like you said, I mean, having your son being born out there is different too. Like you never would have thought. And it's amazing to see now, like, I was out here, you know, my son was able to, you know, be born out here. I was able to play for two years and now I can go back uh, and play in Mexico and then go. And, and so it's, it's just amazing your story, man. I really appreciate your time on being on the hashtag Let's Kick It series. It's amazing to see, you know, all the things that you've been through and that motivation that kept you going. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like that motivation that kept you from getting that draft your senior year and being like, hey, I'm going to put this on the side, but I know that if I keep on going with that discipline, that motivation to get that second draft, you know, then it was, it's, it's a dream come true. And so it's just amazing to see. Nah, man, I appreciate that. It's been fun uh, jumping on here and, and ch chopping it up with you, man. And, uh, you know, I think this is really cool what you're doing with the athletes and, and everybody in the industry. And I think that, um, you know, it's a good way for us to tell our story, um, you know, allow others to kind of hear what we've gone through and, and relate to so many people. Because ultimately, like, we all have some of the same issues. We all go through some of the same things, no matter the sport, no matter the career. So uh, this is really cool what you're doing, man. No, definitely, man. I appreciate you. And guy, definitely got to get your jersey, put it up here one time so we can have you get it signed, you know. And so I just want to thank you again, man, for being on this week's episode on the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. I wish you nothing but the best. Um, and we'll definitely, you know, talk soon. I want to thank everyone who joined on this week's episode on the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. Once again, I want to thank Xavier for being part of this and taking time off out of his day um uh, check in next week be tuned in we're gonna have another professional athlete join us enjoy and have a good rest of your day